Hello everyone, and welcome to another Company Heroes 2 replay cast. My name is ATR, and today we're gonna have ourselves a 1v1 Rear echelon squad ready for action. on some Waski. Our heroes today are going to be PSG Red X Wings playing as the US forces in the yellow. And his opponent is going to be Mr. Pencil Grenadier's Angry Finn, playing as the Ostir or Wehrmacht faction in the pink or purple trunks. So, we see Red X Wings going for a um, rear echelon opening very aggressively. We also see rear echelons laying down some wire on the exits of the houses here. Trying to either prevent units from going in, or trying to catch them when they get out. Considering the proximity to it, that'll most likely catch and trap a squad if it tries to get out in that direction. So, it looks like that is kind of what he's banking on. Also, we see that Mr. Red X Wings is, well, not sporting really any commanders. As he only has the Airborne Company selected from, you know, his three choices, so... If Angrafian was paying attention, he kind of knows what commander he's going for, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, we see uh, oh, a fuel cache getting dropped off right down and early for uh, Mr. Red X Wings. For Angrafian, he has gone for uh, Tier 1 and then is opening with a sniper play. Grenadier into sniper. An interesting choice, and... Obviously, he does not know that there's only rear echelons, but, you know, obviously there's a lot of target practice for the sniper, which is currently retreating, which makes it run faster into the field. <laughs> um, but it um, it seems like the sniper's not going to be that great against rear echelons. At least I don't think so, because, I mean, yeah, obviously it's going to kill a lot of things, but they're not really that high value, so... It can probably get a lot of kills, but it's not going to get a lot of veterancy. At least not early on, so we'll see what ends up happening. So anyways, over here on the right-hand side, we see the Pios for Angrafian trying to lay down some wire here. As they um, try and block off the uh, the water approach here onto the small island on the uh, right-hand side. The rear echelons two at a time, not allowing those Pios to finish their build. They move themselves across the river and will be recapturing that point. Sniper is being moved in that direction. Let's go ahead and put a hotkey on that sniper. Uh... If the game lets us, but it doesn't let you right away. No, that's right. There we go. <laughs> it's weird how it uh, works sometimes, because it's not exactly selecting, but we'll see. So yeah, we can see right here over on the left-hand side that the house is allowing units to pop inside uh, from this direction. However, like I said, when they exit, if they exit through that door, they're going to all get themselves caught in there and not be able to move. Grenadier squad going for the cutoff right outside of Red X Wing's base, taking some damage here as the rear echelon squad pops inside the house. And uh, and they backpedal a little bit. Rear echelon squad pops itself out and going to chase it down. We have a second squad with only two members trying to engage against the Grens. Even with five members here, rear echelons are not the best, so they are going to have a tough time against the squad. Grenadier squad is focusing their sights now on the two-man squad. We'll quickly bring it down one and potentially kill it if it doesn't retreat. It does retreat, but it may be a little bit too late. Can they finish it off? There goes the volleys. One more. Oh, barely makes it out of there. That was a near, near miss there. Or, well, a, a, a close call, I should say, for, uh, for Red X-Wings. So Angrafin continues to hold the engagement. As we see over on the right-hand side, the... Uh, Sniper trying to catch some rear echelons out in the open, manages to get one, catches a second one on the, well not retreat, uh, the approach, takes another shot, down to one man, forcing the retreat, can he pick off the kill? Yep, down goes the uh, rear echelon squad for Red X-Wings, and Angrafian manages to catch himself a nice little squad there with his sniper, so in that scenario, then that is definitely, definitely worth it. This other uh, rear echelon squad did manage to retreat from the front down to one man. And we now have Pathfinders on the field for Red X-Wings as he also teched up to the Lieutenant, which is hitting the field right now. Builds himself yet another rear echelon squad to bolster his numbers, wanting to keep the uh, field presence alive. Over on the left-hand side, Grand Squad capturing that point as it looks like the uh, rear echelons were really unable to do too much against them. And then we have the Grands on the far north capturing that fuel point. Which is not currently connected. It will be connected in a little bit once this point gets capped. 
Sniper still moving around in the center has taken very, very small amounts of damage. Rear Echelon Squad popping inside this house as we also see a fighting position being built in the center of the map for Red X-Wings. Not fully built as we see the Rear Echelon Squad popping out. Sniper taking some hits. Pathfinders trying to see if they can spot them. The Pathfinders, of course, do have a lot more firepower than a Rear Echelon Squad, although they are... Hmm. I wonder who's more fragile, a Pathfinder Squad or a Rear Echelon Squad. At least, you know, a non-veteran Rear Echelon Squad. Pathfinders are pretty squishy. They're able to dish out a decent amount of damage, but, um, but yeah, they fall rather quick. Grand Squad doing quick work of them. Down to one man on the retreat with the sniper in front of it. Sniper takes a shot. Actually, I don't even know if the sniper was the one that took the shot there, but Pathfinder Squad goes down for Red X-Wing, so not going very well for him at this stage. Jeez. Rear Echelon Squad retreats down to one man. Grenz putting up quite a fight. And the sniper, eighth kill so far. Is about two thirds, no, like three quarters of the way to the uh, veteran see there. So should be getting some nice double tap abilities later on. And we'll see if Angrafian utilizes those. Rear Echelons and Pyos engaging over on the right hand side by the island. Rear Echelons popping inside the house. Fighting position has been set up, but it is in a very weird angle. Not exactly sure why Red X has decided to place it there. I mean, could have placed it a little bit more over here and cover the angle in this direction, but it's facing straight down onto the point and covering this approach, which I suppose it's nice, but it is completely uh, vulnerable. MG42 inside this house. Seems to be popping its incendiary rounds, which are going to do a little bit of extra damage there to the structure, although... Not too much. The key here, though, it is that it is doing more damage to the units inside. Because even if you put your squads inside the fighting position, it's basically like a house. They're still going to take damage. You know, you don't have to destroy the structure to be able to take down the, uh, the units inside. So, yeah, the incendiary rounds continue to fly, doing some damage to the fighting position, bringing it down now to about almost half health. It'll eventually fall if nothing gets brought into position, but we now have the anti-air half-track on the field for Red X-Wings. Needs to drive with its ass facing the enemy to be able to be the best effectiveness that it can. Turns itself around. This is one of the things that they're saying that they're probably going to fix, I'm assuming. This is, well, I don't know if you could see it there, but the gun was protruding through the hull there. Not exactly through the front, but it was still able to, uh, to get a bit of an angle there. It's kind of weird also that we don't no longer see the you ready to roll out? the angle that it used to show. It used to show the uh, the firing arc that it would have, but oh well. I guess they decided that that wasn't necessary for observers or players or whatever. Anyways, Grand Squad down south engaging the uh, rear echelons. Grands will win, so not really any use. Yeah. Sorry, not any use in looking at that fight. We know how it's going to end. Um, we do have a lieutenant moving in that direction, however, so the rear echelons may be able to hold out a little bit longer and put the, uh, engagement in the benefit, or the, uh, yeah, like, swing it in the favor of the lieutenant, and it looks like they do. The Grand Squad is quickly forced to retreat as they have already lost one man, taking some damage, they lose one more man on the retreat, potentially losing one more, nah, it looks like they're gonna be fine, shots continue to fly, but two men are still there, still, uh, relatively strong, Med Bunker has gone down for Angrafien. Sniper is sitting there in the center island, taking some, well, not really island, but, you know, in the center of the map, taking some shots at the rear echelons. We see a stutter there goes down as the anti-air half track. There we go. Once again, we see what we, uh, what we were talking about. Look at that gun. It just keeps shooting. Why, why did it do that? It never used to do that. So they changed something, I'm assuming, to the anti-air half track when they took away that, you know, arc that it used to do. But it is apparently something that is being fixed in the upcoming patch for the 29th, because it says there that the entire half track should not be able to clip through the turret. It's weird. I don't remember it, uh, remember it doing that before, but maybe I just missed it. Anyways, uh, Lieutenant down south, capturing the point outside the base, getting engaged by Grenz and Pyos, and even the sniper getting brought in. So they are quickly forced to back away. They're not currently retreating, just backpedaling, but probably will soon have to retreat as the sniper is moving in that direction. Rear echelons in the center do have a mine sweeper. They managed to clear out a mine there, although the teller mine, not sure if it got fully built. I think it did, though. Kind of weird. Anyway, that entire half-track moving around in the center, going to be trying to catch that, um, 
that pack gun. The pack gun trying to position itself. It is getting shot up there by the rear echelons, both inside the church and outside. Taking some damage, but not too much. And the entire half track pops out and is going to proceed to repair. Lieutenant down south going to be engaging the Pios. Grand squad behind capturing as the sniper retreated and is going to get healed up. We see a paratrooper squad getting called in for red X-Wings. And we see his uh, bulletin selection does, you know, show that he wants to go airborne and pathfinders and paratroopers and such. So we'll see what happens. Grand's up in the north retreating as it seems like they were doing a lot of damage there to the fuel cache. The rear echelon squad is going to go repair it as we see the paratroopers falling onto the field. And wow, we're going to see the Thompson submachine guns getting up, upgraded or uh, activated here. Usually you see the LMGs getting selected as they're basically too good, but... Yeah, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Pretty sure they broke it somehow in, in a patch. I didn't know when, but they didn't used to do that. Anyways, Grand Squad retreating, barely manages to make it out of there with one man still alive as the uh, rear echelons take quite a beating down to one man and are unable to really hold the line. Rear echelons and pathfinders being utilized in their numbers to uh, capture as much territory as, the, we, as they can. We do have the Thompson submachine guns now activated on the paratroopers. Paratroopers right behind the church as we have the sniper sitting there in the center capturing territory. It's not currently in cover, which is interesting that it didn't get placed in cover. It's a little bit far forward. That point right there where it needs to be in that point. And it could capture under cover. So the sniper reveals itself as it takes a shot to the lieutenant. The uh, paratroopers are going to get right behind the sniper. The sniper is going to try to retreat. It does hit retreat. Can the paratroopers catch it on the retreat? They have the SMGs. They have the range. Can they finish it off? Yeah, they can. Hells yeah, they can. Down goes the paratrooper. We also see the activation of tactical assault as the paratroopers push forward. Uh, it says, by stating their weapons and focusing their repair, their fire paratroopers more effectively, but are more vulnerable to enemy attacks. So it increases something about your attack, but makes you more vulnerable in some sense. What are the values exactly? I don't know. Not going to check, but we very rarely see it activated. So there we go. A half track over on the right hand side, catching the Pio squad as it tries to flamethrower the uh, rear echelons out of the house, managing to uh, push it away, and the rear echelons remain strong. Paratroopers still on the field, going to be engaging the uh, the Grens. The Grens trying to form a line here against the paratroopers. The paratroopers engaging their tactical assault, but that makes them more vulnerable. They're able to put down a decent amount of fire. However, with their tactical assault, they're basically moving slower and uh, are unable to retreat quickly quickly. Puma coming in online for uh, Angrafin as he does select the Mobile Defense Doctrine. Puma should be pretty good here against the anti-air half-track. The anti-air half-track trying to move out of the way. No mines have been laid down in the path or anything, so the, uh, the uh, Puma doesn't really have much to fear. Pathfinders and uh, rear echelons engaging over here at the front as the MG moves out of the way. Puma moving over to the right-hand side, trying to see if he can catch the uh, half-track out in the open, but half-track manages to run all the way back to base and stay alive. Major has come online for Red X-Wings, so I can only assume we'll see some Shermans. Paratroopers holding their fire and just uh, keeping line aside there on the MG-42. And it's obviously going to spot the Grants as they move out. Grants not moving in his direction and not actually capturing the point outside of the base, which is kind of weird. Now, now they do. But the paratroopers know that they're, uh, I mean, the pathfinders know that they are right there, because you can see them. So the rear echelon squad getting upgraded with a, um, let's see, let's switch it over there, no, switch it here, switch it there, there we go. Uh, yeah, we see the weapon racks getting unlocked for red X-Wings as he gets a bazooka going on the rear echelon squad with the sweeper. Which is interesting, but I guess it makes sense. They don't really have that great of anti-infantry firepower, so may as well. Pathfinder squad over on the left-hand side gets annihilated as it decided to stay there where the Grens were. I guess I'll make a note so we can see when they died. Uh, I should probably be looking at something else. But I'm not, because I'm writing down, so there you go. <laughs> okay, anyways. Uh, so yeah, the, uh, the MG and everything dislodges the rear echelon squad from inside the house. And away they go. 
over on the right hand side major and lieutenant moving forward with the paratroopers there for support paratroopers doing a lot of damage to the retreating squad down goes the pile squad bursting into flames as their flames are always get ignited puma trying to engage against all this infantry manages to force the retreat of the major and the lieutenant the paratrooper squad holds strong as it well, i mean again it's a puma so it doesn't really have too much to fear there we're going to be moving over to the right hand side and capturing the victory point Puma going to try and get right on top of them. It is actually going to take a lot of damage there to the SMGs at close range. It's not, you know, quick damage, but it's a decent amount of damage, actually. So it'll uh, it'll start to add up after a little while as the Puma just continuously shoots the wall in front of it. So that's what Pumas do. Back behind it, the uh, pack gun is moving up. We do see a Sherman getting produced for red X-Wings as he wants to have something a little bit heavier on the field. Second pack then is getting produced for Angrafin, as he is expecting some type of vehicle play to come down. He does, of course, still have to contend with that anti-air half-track, which uh, Red x has done a decent job of uh, making sure it stays there, but there goes the Puma. Puma goes down, running itself through a bad, bad angle here and uh, managing to get itself killed by the bazookas of the rear echelon squads. How many bazookas did these uh, squad have? Looks like only one. <laughs> Anyways, second Puma coming onto the field for Angrafin, as he still wants to have some type of vehicle present on the field. You don't want to concede that very uh, early. MG42 inside the church. Going to be attacking the uh, anti-air half-track. Pack gun set up across the ridge, trying to cover the center island, but really not in range to do too much. Grand squad retreating as we see a rear echelon squad moving on top of it. Two of the rear echelon squads have acquired veterancy too, which means they get the additional man, so they are now five-man squads. Paratroopers retreating, down to two men. They have done quite a bit as they do get themselves veterancy too. And the anti-air half-track goes down quickly to the combination of the pack gun and the puma in the center of the map. Sherman is online, Sherman is moving, but... I mean, the Sherman can't really go head-on against the Puma. I mean, maybe if it was already damaged, they could risk it. But the Puma has a very strong gun and can actually take down the Sherman very, very easy, actually. Another paratrooper squad getting called in for Red X-Wings. Wanting to have that, um, that power, that punch on the field. Rear echelon squad popping inside the house right outside of Angerfin's base, taking some shots at the Puma with the bazooka. Popping out, going to be chasing it down, I suppose. It is only one bazooka on that squad, so it's not too much damage, but shots continue to fly. It whiffs completely. It actually is a dud and doesn't end up exploding, so the rear echelon squad is forced to retreat. Going to have to run the gauntlet through the MG and everything, but it should be fine. The MG is brought down to one man there by the entire half track, so it needs to uh, probably retreat. Yeah, it packs up, gets out of the house, and uh, I would assume hits retreat, although it's just simply walking back. There it goes. Sherman in the center. Right hand side, we see some Grenz for Angrafin going and capping some territory. Down south, we have Grenz looking at the fuel point, but not capturing it. And then the Sherman is going to go down that island. Retreating, we have the lieutenant down to one man. Paratrooper squad coming out. Paratrooper squad once again getting upgraded with Toms and some machine guns. Very nice. Major up in the north, not capturing the point again. Well, another squad not capturing points is what I'm trying to say. Grand Squad retreating pretty clumped up here as the shots from the Sherman could potentially kill off. Yeah, manages to get two of them down to one man on the Grand Squad, but it will make it out of there. So only a little bit of uh, manpower damage, I suppose. Counterattack tactics, which allows them to uh, take territory quickly. Allows the recapturing of the fuel point. And the, uh, the units are moving forward with their capping ability. We do see Ostrupen on the field because you have the uh, Ostrupen reserves. One of them comes with an LMG. One of them is already Veteran C3. Jeez. Veteran C3 and Veteran C2 with an LMG. Damn, that's good. Pretty powerful. I've seen no, no Veteran Z in like Veteran Z1 and things like that. So the variance on that is quite high. So the Ostrupen squad goes for the point right outside of Red X-Wing's base. Getting itself... Uh, beaten down. Forces the retreat down to three men. Down to one man on the retreat. Can they actually retreat? I don't think so. There's a paratrooper squad with SMGs in front of them. 
Oh, makes it out. Wow. That is actually quite surprising. That pair, I mean, that uh, old Supreme squad had no right to live, actually. Those paratroopers should have done a way better job there and shot with their uh, SMGs. And there's four windows in that direction. I mean, that's a lot of firepower. Yet the guy still made it out of there, so a little bit of more focused fire would have gone a long way there. Back at base. Oh, wow, what's wrong with my throat? I didn't get any water today. Damn it. Enemy forces are securing Focus, ATR. Territory. <coughs> Anywho. Um... So yeah, we saw some troops retreating there for um, Angrafin as the Ostrupin squad barely made it out of there. Paratrooper squad now with Veteran C2. What did they get as a Veteran C? They get um, abilities recharge quicker as a result, and grenade range, weapon accuracy, and enables the squad to heal while out of combat. Wow, that's actually great for the paratroopers. Anyways, MG42 catches it, gets it pinned down, and the Puma gets right on top of them and forces a quick retreat. Rear echelon squad and lieutenant moving straight through the center. The MG42 opening up on the approach. Going to be able to suppress the squad, although it is focusing on the rear echelons. The lieutenant manages to flank it and get itself on the other side. Grenades will be flying, I would suppose. I would assume. No. No, no grenades. Puma moves up. The Puma can't crush. It's not, not that I can crawl. No, it can't crush. It's light vehicle. Well, not medium vehicle, I suppose. But it can't push them around. Wow, I'm so hoarse right now. Please, what's wrong? Gotta push through. Gotta push through. Anyways, uh, so yeah, the lieutenant unable to do too much there manages to do a little bit of damage there to the MG inside. Being forced to retreat as it gets pushed around. Up in the north we have a rear echelon squad with a bazooka being holed up inside that house. Gets a good shot there on the MG as it forces it to retreat, popping it outside the house. Rear echelon squad retreating as we do have some LMG equipped Grens. And the Puma, trying to get some shots in there, is getting shot at by the uh, by the Bazookas. Back at the front of the base, the uh, Sherman getting repaired. Now back to full strength, going to be moving out and attacking. Oh, a nicely played shot there on the Grand Squad. Brings it down to one man, not retreating, forces a retreat now. But it looks like the uh, Sherman has backed off before... Oh, wow, that actually hits. Before the pack guns uh, manage to, uh, to nail it. Shots are being targeted at where the Sherman is. The Sherman takes some damage, but is now back online. And is going to be moving itself to a different position. Paratrooper squads moving together. That's a lot of firepower with those SMGs. Nothing can really stand in their way as far as infantry goes. And the pack guns are forced to split up and back off. One pack gun gets caught. Loses one of its members. And down it goes in a very quick succession. MG, I mean, um, Sherman pushing forward. Destroying the main gun of the Puma. Puma goes down. And the paratroopers and Grens are all retreating as... Angrafian's defenses uh, collapse quite aggressively with the turnabout of a second Sherman. Angrafian calling in his uh, command tank. Going to be trying to have something that can potentially go toe-to-toe -to -toe against these uh, Shermans. However, we can see here that both AT guns, both pack guns, have been dropped onto the field and uh, can potentially be stolen here by Red X-Wings. Or at the very least, he can just, uh, you know destroy them but no he does decide to go for the steel gets one AT gun online get, manages to get a good shot going on the command tank the command tank still shooting at the paratroopers that are capping right outside of the base the uh, MG42 across the river will be able to clear out this pack gun so it's a little bit of waste uh, as far as no never mind wow very nice control and uh, decision making there for red x-wings he decides to pop the uh, smoke screen from his chairman pop it right across the river and allows the pack gun that got stolen to make an, uh, a very quick retreat second pack gun gets stolen once again by the paratroopers this time around getting themselves cleared out here by the command tank as the command tank is pretty good but the command tank is now in a bad spot here as it doesn't really have much that can defend it paratroopers oh, not paratroopers damn austroop and squad forced to retreat down to two men barely make it out of there the command tank still there still alive sherman shots continue to fly doing a lot of damage to the mg the mg down to one man gets cleared out the, the panzer four trying to hold off against these shermans the shermans are equipped right now with explosive rounds so they are unable to do too much damage here to the panzer four so the panzer four is okay until these guys switch over this gun switches over to armor piercing the other ones does not over on the right-hand side, Pio squads and Grens are pushing forward, trying to capture some territory as the Sherman decides that it wants to engage in that direction. Armor-piercing rounds now loaded, managing to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against the command tank. The command tank has done some damage. Rear echelon squad with its five members pops up. Gets a nice bazooka, yeah, a bazooka shot going 
on the Panzer IV. AT gun getting turned around. Can it get a shot off? No, it cannot get a shot off. And the rear echelon squad loses to the bazooka. Needs to go pick it up and then retreat. There it does, and it does retreat. Barely makes it out of there as the pack gun is now going to be forced to back off. Ostrupen pushing forward. The Sherman is still there. Now loading its high explosive rounds and uh, wanting to turn itself around. No. That's engine damage, but... Oh, it's set to prioritize vehicles. Didn't you used to have a little icon on top like these guys? <laughs> Weird. Anyways, Major and Lieutenant Pussy... Pussy... Damn it, what is wrong with me? <laughs> They're pussing so aggressively. Uh, down goes one of the Ostrupen squad. The second, second Ostrupen squad trying to hold off against this... Uh, Swat of infantry, the major, very aggressive right in front of everything, manages to pop. That was cheeky there by Red X, but it didn't work out. If you notice there, what the Red X did is he set up a, uh, a retreat path or a retreat point for uh, for the major and tried to hit retreat on the lieutenant, so it would retreat to him. But it doesn't work if you're uh, if you're suppressed and uh, pinned down yourself. So a very nice cheeky attempt, but they have already uh, addressed that and fixed that previously. Ostrupen squad trying to hold off against the Sherman. The Sherman really not having much to worry about here. Uh, rear echelon squad inside the church is going to die either the church collapses or the squad inside gets itself killed to the MG. Pack on moving up behind it or moving behind it, I suppose. MG shot flies into the church and the rear echelon squad dies inside the church. It was a very highly veteran squad, which is uh, sad and unfortunate, but eh, I mean... At this stage, he doesn't really care. He has three Shermans on the field now for Red X-Wings. So he is doing a quite fine. Quite fine indeed. So the three Shermans currently in the center of the map. They all need repairs. These two desperately as their engines are currently set on fire. Majors and all the infantry is back at base. The uh, Major does have better NC2. Could potentially set up a forward retreat spot to, you know, make the downtime a little bit less frequent, but um, he is using the Major a little bit aggressively and pushing with him, so I suppose that's why. Grand Squad being forced to retreat by the paratroopers. Command tank trying to get some shots across the uh, the building, but with the building there in place, it's just going to hit the building itself and not, uh, not hit the paratroopers yet until the building collapses. Now that it collapses, now we can actually shoot and potentially hit the paratroopers from the other side. They're still sitting there, covered, you know, in the fog of war behind line of sight, but Continuous shots. One of them will probably eventually hit. Nothing yet, though. Lieutenant rushing forward as it has his veterans. See, there we go. The shot finally hits there by the command tank as it nails two of the paratroopers. Rear echelons pushing forward. The MG catching the lieutenant out in the open, forcing it to uh, hit the dirt. It's going to be able to... No, it's not going to be able to crawl its way into the church as it gets itself pinned down. Shots fly from the um, paratrooper squad trying to catch... The uh, Pyo squad out in the open, but it does not manage to do so. The lieutenant squad does get forced away. And the major is now crawling through the field as it tries to move itself past the arc of fire of the MG, but does not manage to achieve so. So, Angrafin, having lost a lot of infantry, now has the command tank and a Stug now on the bay. Not on the base, on the field. So that's pretty good for him. However, against three Shermans... I mean, the Stug and the Pagan have to be perfectly placed in maneuver to be able to win the engagement. So we'll see how it goes, as it looks like the engagement is going to go down. The Command Tank catching one of the Shermans in the rear, not managing to penetrate it, however, as it is, you know, not that great against uh, other tanks with its stubby little gun. Stug moving around, going to be... Oh, no, it's getting itself flanked here by the Shermans. The other Shermans moving into the center. Going to be trying to catch that MG-42. The Stug now backing off, going to be turning around. Getting a good shot going. Gets that Sherman there down to about half health. Pack gun's going to be moving up. Second pack gun moving up itself. The uh, Stug is still targeting infantry now. Revealing itself as the two stolen pack guns set themselves up in an angle to shoot at the Stug. The Stug takes some damage. Some hits. Shermans push forward. The Shermans can now go on the assault. Shots fly. The pack gun is in position there to take some shots. There goes the shots on one of the Shermans. One of the Shermans is... Potentially going to go down. The Stug gets itself abandoned, so that's a lot of firepower lost here for Mr. Angrafien. Sherman's now surrounding the Pagan. The Pagan is now cleared off. The command tank unable to finish the job against this Sherman. Has it very low in health. Could potentially kill it off. There goes the shots, but it's just not a strong gun. It's unable to penetrate the armor. There it goes. 
manages to find a weak spot and down goes to Sherman. The stug gets stolen by a rear echelon squad as the command tank is trying to move its way back. Down goes the command tank for Mr. Angerfien as Red X-Wings puts the uh, nail in the coffin. Those troop and squads trying to do as best they can. They are currently retreating to the might of the Shermans. More Ostrupen squads moving out onto the field. The uh, pack gun has been cleared out. Still shows there on the uh, on the units, but it's because the guy is still running away. An and the Ostrupens are forced to retreat all the way back to the base. Sink her detected, and the game comes to the close as Red X Wings takes it. Yeah, that was that was pretty brutal. <laughs> Stolen stuck there at the end. Yeah, that was not gonna. No way to come back from that. So anyways, guys, I uh, hope you enjoyed the game. If you have any positive or negative remarks, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. If you have any replays you want to send me, go ahead and send them to the email that I will put in the description. But otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.